These are the notes for day three, and we're starting with a little bit of warm up here. This is, goes back to algebra one, your freshman algebra or your freshman math class. So um, we're going to use this. Uh, you may or may not have seen this before. We're going to use a rectangle or what I call an area model because when we multiply um, two numbers, the the analogy is. When you take the product of two things, it's like finding the area of a rectangle. And um, if we have a length and a width, then the area is length times width, right? It's the product of two numbers. That's what this is, uh, right? L times W, that's the product of two numbers. And we're going to use this model to, um, to distribute or expand um, the product of two numbers. So if you notice here, we have the product of two numbers. This would be like length and width. So if x plus 3 is the length, then we have this model down here. This is x and this is 3. We're going to put the plus with the 3. Um, and then if the width is x minus 7, that would be along this dimension of the rectangle. And then we can just multiply each s sector of the rectangle. So um, change colors, x times x is x squared, um, 3 times x is 3x, x times negative 7 is negative 7x, and negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And then we can combine like terms. So our like terms would be our x terms. Notice they're on the diagonal. That always happens. And so we end up with x squared minus 4. My 2 is getting sloppy. x squared minus 4x minus 21. So it's, it's an area model. Um, and this, the nice thing is the area model works anywhere. Like, for instance, here we have a number, 4x times a number, right? We have a product of the two numbers. So let's be consistent here, length and width. Okay, this would be the width, 4x, right? It's just a single, single term, single row. This would be the length, x and minus 1. So we would have 4x squared minus 4x. So that would be our distributed or expanded polynomial, or expanded quadratic. Okay, so um, pause the video and try this one, and then go ahead and restart the video and check your answer. Okay, I'm assuming you've tried it yourself, so we'll call this the length and the width. So the length is 2x plus 1, and the width is 3x minus 1. So we have 6x squared here, and 3x times 1 is 3x. And 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. And 1 times negative 1, remember this is multiplying, right, is negative 1. We're not adding here. We're multiplying and then we're combining. So we're going to combine those like terms along the diagonal. We're going to get 6x squared plus 1x minus 1. Or we could call that 6x squared plus x minus 1. Okay? Um, so go ahead and try to, um, well actually bef before you do, let's, let's talk about how you might have learned this differently uh, in a freshman math class. So the other, the other w things we can call what we did above is we can call it foil and we can call it claw and let's go over those two methods. So FOIL is an acronym. It stands for first, outside, inside, last. So F for first is taking the first term in each set of, in each product, right, in each set of brackets, and uh, multiplying it together. Outside means take the first in the first set of brackets and the last in the last set of brackets. They're on the outside of the expression, so that's outside. So X times 3 is 3X. And um, inside... I stands for inside, and inside is those other two terms. We call those the cross product terms, 
because it's multiplying a number times a variable. Um, and so that is 5x. And then these are the last terms uh, because they're at the ends of each one of the expressions. And that's 15. And then you can see we're combining, right, this is the diagonal of the area method. There are our two like terms to combine. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 15. So that is FOIL. And um, if you notice, FOIL makes what we would call um, a claw. And so that's why sometimes people call it the claw method. If I draw the arcs without the arrows and without the acronym from the previous um, problem, it looks like a lobster claw, right? You know, if you've ever seen under the, under the sea, right, or something like that, we, it looks like we have a set of pincher claws here. So sometimes people call it the claw method, but it, it's the same multiplication as FOIL. So in this case, it would be x squared. That would be the, the, the first part of the claw here, the top part. And this would be minus 3x. And then the bottom part of the claw would be plus 4x and minus 12. And then just like the area model above, we're combining those two terms. So we get x squared plus 1x, or just x, uh, minus 12. So, and then, so we call that claw. Um, three different ways to accomplish the same task. So on part C, why don't you um, pick your method and decide which one you're going to do here. Go ahead and pick a method here. And pause the video, go ahead and multiply that out, and um, start the video back up again to check your work. Okay, so I'm a fan of geometry. I'm going to do the area or the rectangle method. I'm going to do this a little more like you would use algebra tiles. So um, x is usually a larger square. And then, um, in fact, I'm going to uh, erase that and erase a little bit of this to make it just a wee bit shorter. There we go. And there we go. So this is going to represent x minus 6 and x minus 5. There you go. Okay, and, um, and so we get x squared, we get minus 6x, we get minus 5x, right? Two negative x terms because we had two negatives in the brackets. And then a negative times a negative is a positive, so this is plus 30. And then we have those like terms on our diagonals here. So we have x squared minus 11x plus 30. The reason why I like the area method is because when we have more to multiply, it ends up being easier than trying to draw claws and stuff like that. Um, but we're just working on quadratics, so I think any one of these methods would be just great. Okay, so this is a little bit of check and guess and fill in the blank. So um, we're going to go through a few of these and then I'm going to stop the, have you stop the video and try them yourself. Um, okay, so this is, a, this is a straight foil or claw or area method, however you want to do that. I'll do the uh, claw here. So there's my top claw. It's x squared plus 4x. <clears throat> Here's my bottom claw. It's 3x and 12. And so when we combine our like terms, we get x squared plus 7x plus 12, right? Here's our like terms. Um, okay, so this one, I, I call this the guess and check because we're, we're looking at the answer here and what we really have to focus on is making 14. So what number do we need here? To make 14, we need 2. Done. All right, likewise here. Um, we know we need to make 14 again. But in this case, we need, we, need, we need to find both the numbers. So we have a choice here. We've got those two choices. And we need to make a 15 here. And this is the only way to make a 15. So it must be a 1 and a 14. OK, you, pa uh, you pause the video and you try D and E. 
and then turn the video back on and you can see the explanation. Okay, if you got the video back on, then we're looking at this. So D is a lot like <clears throat> uh, B, right? So we're looking at, um, it's, like it's kind of one thing is missing. So we don't know the product, but we know we have to make six by adding. So five plus what equals six? And that's five plus one. So we know this needs to be a one. And then this, we got to make by multiplying these last two, so we know this needs to be a five. Um, and then this, we, we need to make an x squared, so we know we need to have an x here. And um, we know we need to multiply to an 18, and we have a three. So three times what equals 18, and that's six. So we need a six here, and it's a plus 18, so we know we need a plus six. Okay. Um, And so what we have here is we have this situation where we are um, kind of looking at multiplying two numbers and adding to the same two numbers to get two different results. Uh, go ahead and try F. Pause the video and try F. Uh, use your favorite method and uh, start up the video and um, you can get an explanation. Okay, so if you start up the video again, um, let's see, in part A I did a claw, in part F I think I'll do an area. Uh, it's always good to know more, more than one method uh, of how to do something. So here is my area method, and I'll call this uh, x and plus 7 and x and minus 4. So this is x squared plus 7x minus 4x. 7 times negative 4 is negative, so negative 28. And then here are those like terms to combine. So I've got x squared plus 3x minus 28. Okay, so now these next ones get, there's a little more left out, right? Um, so we have to figure out um, what needs to go in each set of brackets. And there's a couple ways of doing that. Um, let's look at h first. So we, because it's more of a fill in the blank sort of thing. Uh, we know we need to make an x squared. So x times x is x squared. And then we also know we need to make a 54 and it needs to be negative. So we know we need a negative sign there because we need a positive times a negative to make a negative 54. And so negative 54 equals six times what? That's what we need to put in the brackets. And so we know it needs to be a negative number and then that number is nine. So that needs to be a negative nine. Okay, now looking at G and I. G and I is asking you to fully factor those, um, those quadratics. And you, you did this in, in freshman math. Um, and so there's a couple of methods uh, to do this, but the method I like to really rely on is called, is called the STAR method. And the star method starts you out by drawing a star. And it's just an organizer. So the organizer just helps you follow the pattern. So the, the pattern is that we have to multiply to make negative 28. And the way we know that is because those are the last terms, right? So the 4 times the 7 in part f, it gets us the, excuse me, negative 4 times positive 7 gets us the negative 28. Um, in part F here, so we know that that's the pattern. So we we have the same we have the same thing, right? We have a, a pattern here of negative twenty eight. So is it a four and a seven? I don't know, but it, it could be one times twenty eight. It could be um, two times fourteen, right? That's a fact. Those are factors of twenty, and it could be four times seven. We don't know which one it is in order to kind of complete the uh, um, complete the, the puzzle, we also need to know that we need to add to a negative three. Not a positive three like the one above, but a negative three. So um, if we have to add to a negative three, that's, that's the terms that we circle and combine, right? Um, in, in, the, uh, in F above, it was a positive three. So, um, we know we, in this case, we need to make a negative 28. So this is how we fill out the organizer. 
the top of the organizer is A times C. So if you remember the standard form of a quadratic is AX squared plus BX plus C. So in this example here in GR, A is 1. So 1 times negative 28 is negative 28. In other words, we can just, right now, because A is 1, we can just look at C. And then the bottom of the star is the, is the added, adding number. So that's, that, that's the negative 3. Let me make that green. Negative 3. Um, there we go. Okay, so, um, so we, we have to notice the pattern of the negatives. Because we have the pattern of the negatives, that means uh, one of the answers, ha one of the numeric options has to be positive and one has to be negative. And then what we put up in here in the star is just the variable x. That represents the, uh, what we multiply to get the x squareds. So um, if we have to do this with one being a positive and one being a negative, then this is our only option. And if I, we have to make a negative 3, that means our 7 needs to be negative because um, we need a, the bigger digit to be negative so that we end up with extra negatives after we add the 4 and the negative 7 together. And then that is what it becomes our product of two numbers. It's going to be x plus 4, x minus 7. So this is going to be x plus 4 and x minus 7. So the star is that organizer to help you keep straight, keep keep track of um, what we need to multiply to and what we need to add to. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's try J. Go ahead and stop the video. J is a, sh a straight uh, multiplying out, so either a claw or a foil or an area method. And uh, stop the video, try it, and um, turn the video back on. We'll check your answer. Okay, so if you're returning to the video, I'm going to do a claw again. So my top claw is x squared minus 3x, and my bottom claw is plus 3x and minus 9. And then we are combining our x terms, and that makes this 0x, so we don't have to write it. So it's x squared minus 9. And we call that, we call this a, a difference of perfect squares. So if you notice, when we have the same information in both brackets, we have an x and a 3, and we have a different sign, then we call that the difference of squares. In other words, we can, we can just ignore the inside outside of the claw. Um, we can just square the first term and square the last term and stick a minus sign in between them, and it's kind of a shortcut. So here's a difference of squares. What goes in each bracket? Pause the video, try to figure that out. Okay, if you're coming back, I'm assuming that you've tried this. So we know, based on the pattern above, that we have an x and an x. And, um, and then we have to multiply two of the same numbers together to get 64. So that must be an 8 and an 8, and a plus and a minus. So when we see two terms and perfect squares, we can fall into that pattern of the difference of perfect squares. So let's pause the video and try L on your own, and then check your answer by starting the video up again. All right, also, so this was a little tricky. It's because it's not a difference. It's, it's uh, two terms, kind of threw you a curveball here. It's two terms with the same sign, both minus signs. So in this case, the inside-outside terms don't, um, don't disappear. So um, we are going to, I'm going to stick with the claw again. It's the cleanest one for this confined space. So my top claw is x squared minus 7x. And my bottom claw is another minus 7x and plus 49. So if we notice here, we're not canceling this out. They're, they're not opposite signs. So this is x squared minus 14x plus 49. So that's slightly different than what we uh, were doing in the previous two. 
Um, okay, so try M, try a star method, and see what you can do. Okay, if you're coming back, I'm assuming you've attempted this on your own. Um, so let's try it. Let's set up the star method here. And we know that the top is A times C, and that's 1 times 144, which is 144. And then the bottom is B, which is 24. And we know we put X's here. And now we need factors of 144. And I've included in your note packet... Oh, I didn't include in your note packet. Shoot, yes I did. I, I included a factor sheet in your note packet. Um, I just don't have it in this PDF. So if you, if you turn uh, the page uh, p past the notes, I believe, um, you, you will be able to find all of the factors of 144. There's a lot of them. There's uh, 1 and 144. There's 2 and 72. There's 3 and 48. Um, I'm trying to think of four and let's see that goes in there three times 36 the five doesn't go in six does six is two and 20 or six is six and 24 seven doesn't go in eight eight goes in um, it's 8 and 18, 9 doesn't go in, 10 doesn't go in, I know 12 goes in because that's a perfect square. So there's a lot of them. And we need to make 24. And notice all the pluses here. So we know we have plus plus. So the only way to make 24 is plus 12 plus 12. So we have x plus 12 here and x plus 12 here. Um, and so if you can notice the pattern of this is 12 squared and this is 12 times 2 then you can show you can use that pattern sometimes it's a tough pattern to see though okay so for n and o um, we're getting into really big numbers notice what they're doing with n though they're factoring out a 2 so um, if we factor out a 2, we're left with x squared plus 24x plus 144. Okay, and we just did that in M. We know it's x plus 12, x plus 12. Um, in O, always look to factor out. If, if, there's a, if there's a number in front of the x squared term, always look to factor that out. That makes it much simpler. And we can factor out a 3. We end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we got 3 out here. And then now we should do a star method where a times c is 6 and b is 5. And so that we, our factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. I see pluses everywhere, so I know where I'm going to have plus plus. And it's going to be plus 2 and plus 3. So this is going to be x plus 2 and x plus 3. Okay? So just some general patterns here. If the product was missing, what strategies did you use? Okay? So if that product is missing, then we're really looking that... We're really looking at um, at looking at those factors. Um, so you have to you have to almost do the multiplication. Um, so um, you know if, if that whole right side was missing, you had to do a foil or a claw or a area method or something like that. You had to do all the multiplying and, and distributing. Um, if the factors were missing, so if, the, if this is the right side and this is the left side. Okay, writing's getting too sloppy here. There we go. Okay, so uh, this is the right side 
This is the left side of above. So if the factors were missing, what strategy did you use? We had to look at, um, we, we, we basically did the star method, right? We had to, we had to look at um, what multiplies to that last number, um, multiplies to the last number, actually multiply, what I should say is multiplies to the A times C product, but, it, but, but we ended up with an A of one, and then it adds or subtracts to that middle number B. Um, and so that's the pattern that we're gonna follow. So um, we have two learning targets, and um, they have to do with you know, getting either side of that expression. So our learning target number one is multiplying. Um, so we have several strategies. We have the claw, we have foil, or we have area. We have three methods for multiplying out. Um, so um, if we had something like Uh, x plus 2 times x plus 3, right? Um, we can just kind of organize it this way. Um, we can claw that out. All right, we can do a, a claw like this, where we get x squared plus 3x. And then we can do a claw, lower claw like that, where we get plus 2x plus 6. And, um, and then combine our terms in the middle. So we get an x squared plus 5x plus 6. Or we can do that area method where we Um, we have uh, x plus 2 and x plus 3. Now I'm not liking my box all that much, but that's okay. Uh, x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. So we see we get the same terms, and then we can do our combining inside our area model, and that's just like combining the two, inner, the two inside terms that are uh, in the other example and we can get our x squared plus 5x plus 6 that way. And then the other learning target is having to do with um, factoring. So reversing the, reversing the process. Um, and that, that we use the star method. And so if we, uh, if we had a... Um, I guess we could just work this one back. Well, let's work the first one, x squared plus 7x plus 10. I'm working the first one and complete your understanding. Then we know that, uh, let me sl slide that down a little bit. Then we know we have to acknowledge the fact that a is 1 and b is 7 and c is 10. And so a times c is 1 times 10, which is 10 and b is the middle number, which is seven, it's the linear term. And then we put the x's here, and that holds the, uh, that holds the first term in each of the brackets that makes our x squared when we multiply together. And then we need our factors of 10. And this is the one that makes seven. We know we need a plus and a plus because we have a plus and a plus here. And uh, so we have a plus two and a plus five, so we have x plus 2 times x plus 5. Okay. Um, so why don't you go ahead and try those other few and check your answer um, against the key in Blackboard. And then, um, and then you can go on to doing the homework for